Hello, Isaiah Henkel here with Cheeky Scientist. Today, I want to talk to you about communicating your PhD skills to industry employers. So what does that mean? What do you have to do to make sure that industry employers understand your value? You have to communicate these to a different audience, okay? Most of us are used to communicating our skills to an academic audience. Now, a simple example of this is you talking, uh, uh, the, speaking the language of academia, right? Using the word moreover, uh, however, furthermore, a lot when you write, uh, possibly uh, really focusing on the complexity of skills, the complexity of the field, uh, words with lots of syllables, uh, really, really focus on more of the technical and specialty skills. And this could be anything from, uh, you know, Western blotting to ethnography. It doesn't matter what your PhD background is. You're very good at talking about skills and duties, right? So, so uh, technical skills, right? So they're usually technical, specialty, right? We look for, you know, complexity. What else do we look for? Right, we wanna, we wanna make sure that uh, we're talking about, uh, you know, tenure base, like time that you spent doing something. Look at your resume right now if you've written one or look at your LinkedIn profile. I bet you have something on there that sounds like I have 10 years of experience in XYZ field. Like that's a strong selling point. You have to change the way that you're communicating if you wanna get noticed in industry, right? So we have to talk to an industry audience. What do they care about? Right? They want to see that you can explain your skills succinctly, especially to a non-technical or non-specialty audience. What does this mean? It means you've got to talk about transferable skills. Right? It means you need to talk about, uh, you got to go for simplicity. If you can't explain it simply, you don't know it well enough. It's often attributed to Einstein. I don't know if that's true, but it is true for industry employers when you're following the social norms of industry, when you want to grab the attention of a non-PhD hiring manager, somebody who has a bachelor's degree or maybe an HRM degree. Okay, what else? We want to look at not tenure and time, but results, right? Impact, achievements. Another thing that we have to do is we got to learn to speak confidently about what we've uh, achieved, okay? So, so think about it in terms of uh, w once you start applying to a job, whether it's on a resume, during an interview, one of the biggest sources of, is that in? That's not quite in. Let's do it. Biggest sources of dread that PhDs have is having to explain skills they don't have. All right, this, this is what you're afraid of. This is the boogeyman for most PhDs, right? You see a job posting, you're really excited about the job, and then you start reading, you see skills you don't have, and you think that it's gonna be like the worst thesis committee ever once you apply, and they're gonna say, why'd you apply for this job if you don't have these skills? That doesn't happen, okay? To get hired, you gotta make the strongest argument for yourself. You have to have extreme confirmation bias that you're the best candidate for the job. It's not the most skilled person who gets hired, it's the person who makes the best argument for their candidacy, okay? So that's really important to understand. Maybe I'll put this down here, right? So it's not, in academia, everything is based on skills. So we think, okay, I'll get hired based on skills alone, right? Two, I always say this in terms of skills for PhDs because that's our lens of the world. Uh, if you're a hammer, the whole world is a nail. So as a PhD, the whole world is based on skills and who has them and who doesn't. But this, again, this is very academic, right? In industry, they're, they're not just, they're not seeing this as the lens, okay? That's, this is an eye, <laughs> okay? That's, that's the lens of academia. Uh, for industry, it's a bit different, right? The, the lens is, is going to be relevancy. Like I said here, impact, right? So what relevant skills do you have? Or ability, what, what, what abilities do you have? Do you have the ability to learn the skills that are required. That's what they're looking for, competency, self-efficacy, okay? So what does that look like? It looks like this, instead of having to start everything with, um, instead of having to start something on your resume or uh, uh, in an interview with saying, I, I have expertise, and I'll move so you can see this, you don't, you don't have to start like this. You don't have to say, I have expertise in, and that's, that's the lens that we look at 
uh, a job posting with as PhDs or whether or not we can apply to the job. If I can't say this on every skill in a job posting, I can't apply. Ridiculous. Job postings are recycled templates. They're additive. They're never going to find somebody who has all of the skills on a job posting. They're, they're looking for somebody who can make the best argument for being able to have those, either having those skills in combination with being able to do those skills or having done relevant activities or having relevant skills, right? So you can say instead, I'm going to switch back over here. You can say, I have the ability to, or I have the ability to learn, right? You could also say, I have X, Y, Z skill, which is, can I fit it on here? Relevant, it's not quite going to fit on. So I have, which is relevant to A, B, C skill, which would be the skill on the job posting, okay? So you can talk about what's relevant, you can talk about uh, skills that uh, or similar, you can talk about what you have the ability to do, what, the ability, what, what you have the ability to learn, right? So, for example, a company might say, oh, we need somebody who can use Trello project management software. And you can say, well, I have managed projects, my entire thesis project, which has a bunch of sub-projects. I can learn the Trello management software by communicating to other professionals. I can learn it before I, before I have to onboard, right? You could say, you could see an example where uh, on a job posting for maybe a data scientist position where it's asking, uh, for somebody who understands Python, but maybe you've done R or MATLAB, and you can say, well, I, I know R or MATLAB, I can adjust by syntax, I can learn this, and you can give some, uh, some simple projects that you started maybe in a GitHub account. So don't count yourself out just because you're trying to take things super, uh, super literally, like an academic. You're only seeing things as skills, black and white, do I have this? You're building a case. Industry wants to see you build a case. They're looking for competency, self-efficacy, that can-do attitude. So this takes us to the end of today's Lightboard training. Remember your value as a PhD and start thinking and acting like a successful industry professional.